Welcome back to the Scrum Facilitators Community Podcast. Uh, my name is Steve Traps, and joining us today is a man of mystery, a man of unique talents. He is another Scrum Facilitator. Sean, would you want to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Steve. And at least one of those things is true. So, um, yeah, I, I am part of the Scrum Facilitators, of course. Uh, uh, it's nice to be in the podcast, uh, not as a host, but just as uh, two trainers having a chat, because this is a special uh, episode of the podcast. Uh, um, uh, I'm here with Steve, and uh, we've uh, thought of this thing of always asking guests to ask difficult questions to the next guest. So, Steve, what are we going to do today with that idea? So what we've done is we've taken all the questions that our friends and, uh, have uh, asked uh, in the podcast and we've put them into a random wheel or you know, a, a wheel of randomness. Uh, and we don't know what questions we're going to get. We've got about nine questions, but we're going to spend about 20 minutes or so uh, pressing that random button. And Sean and myself, we're going to answer these questions the best we can because uh, – I think that seems appropriate. We put other people into those situations, so we really should put ourselves into those situations as well. Uh, we yes. don't know what we're going to get, and some might actually be really cringeworthy answers. Well, from me, it's going to be really cringeworthy <laughs> answers anyway. Um, and we were talking before we came in, just saying, actually, do we have the right to pass? Um, maybe we could just like cop out a little bit and go, yeah, same as me, that kind of thing. Um, but <laughs> maybe we should be brave as well. Um, but I don't know. So, uh, Short, are you ready? Yes, almost. I, I just want to add one more thing, uh, Steve. So if you're listening and you want to be on the podcast or you just have a great question that we should ask guests or want to ask us, uh, please do uh, shoot us a mail or send us a social media message or connect on LinkedIn. Uh, we love to interact. So this is all about collaboration, Scrum Facilitators. So please do uh, let us know if you have any ideas for that. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm now I'm ready. Random wheel. I'm going to spin that <laughs> wheel and I'm going to see what it comes up with. Uh, so it's spinning now. Um, so the question it's landed on, oh, when and what was the last time you did something for the first time? When and what was the last time you did something for the first time? Before the year end, uh, professionally, I did uh, um, uh, product owner training together with uh, Zirian, one of the other Scrum facilitators. And it's been a while since I did a product owner training. So I was like, okay, how does material like? Uh, did we think of any new ways to make it more interactive? Uh, so I, I was like, uh, what's the training like? And I was also jumping in the last minute because uh, one of the other trainers was uh, ill. So um, actually facilitating some of the stuff in that training was, I was doing that for the first time. Um, and luckily, we've been training for a longer time and Zirian knew the tra training from start to end. So I had a, like a safety net. But it was, uh, I, I still was a bit like, oh, I hope this w uh, will go well. And it was also... Yeah. Uh, a, a training that we provided for uh, another partner. As I said, we love to collaborate as Scrum facilitators. So there was this extra pressure of having to deliver for another party, uh, not just for the participants. Um, so yeah, I was a bit like, ah, this is exciting. Uh, will it go right? And of course, it went it went well enough. Um, well yeah. enough. The, that's the, yeah. that's the bar we're <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> the, <laughs> <laughs> and that's not where I set the bar. Uh, the, that's because the bar is well, always yeah. a bit higher, of course. Uh, yeah. It's never perfect, right? So uh, it, uh, yeah. that's just the thing in facilitation or uh, presenting. Uh, I, I'm not cocky enough to be uh, certain that it went 100% well. <laughs> There's always something we could do better. All, yeah, but I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Sorry. It was just that it went well enough. Then it made up my Englishness. Maybe you're spending too much time with me. <laughs> with my, yeah, it's not too bad. So what would it be for you, Steve? Oh, do you know what? I was, I was half listening and half thinking when you were talking, and I'm really struggling with this one. I mean, I was going to say, obviously, you went down the route of the um, – training and immediately what came in my head was the conference that we did last year uh, oh man i should have gone with that because <laughs> otherwise i would be struggling to get it but then this then made me feel that actually what i mean we were doing this at the start of january 2023 
maybe I need to do some more stuff. Maybe I need to push myself a little bit more um, out there. Uh, I've got a significant birthday coming up uh, later on in the year. Um, and I mean, all birthdays are significant because the alternative is not really worth thinking yeah. about. Um, but you're but, turning 40, uh, right? Yeah, 40. Must turn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's, yeah, maybe I should be doing more things. And I, was, I, I did apply to do the mm-hmm. London Marathon this year. I didn't get in which I'm quite pleased about. Um, <laughs> you can still run it. I, mean. I can still run it, yeah, do it virtually. But yeah, <laughs> I, I think, so look, we did the conference last year. That's the first time yes. I've ever been part of a conference set up and it was brilliant and I loved it. And and hopefully everybody else did that attended. And and that was that was a really good experience. And But I think I need to focus more on my own personal goals as well of like doing stuff pushing myself out of my comfort zone um, and doing things that, I mean, I was watching a TV program over Christmas um, and they were doing parasailing over Rio de Janeiro. I'm not saying I'm going to go do that. It'd be great if I could, but um, yeah, I just something like that, just pushing uh, and taking life by the, um, the scruff of its neck or whatever. So, yeah, maybe I thought you were going to go mind. lower on the body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I need to be safe for work this one. So yeah, so it's pushing myself. So I kind yes. of dodged the question, uh, but not. Yeah. So. so, so, so you're not going to commit to anything in this uh, in this podcast. Well, I tell you what, I did do in a training course. I was talking about setting goals and yes. um, how can we do this you know, having a sprint goal and we leave it so it's flexible but still achievable. And I was saying about you running the London Marathon. And I said, look, I applied and didn't get in. But my goal could still be to run the London Marathon, but maybe I do it virtually through Strava or maybe I, on the day, I go run 26 miles um, plus some change on the day. But it's not the London Marathon. And I said, so actually, so what is stopping? I still run a marathon and if I do it through Strava, the virtual way, I can run the virtual ma- marathon. And I said, I think I've just committed to doing that. Um, and again, now I've just committed to doing it on the podcast as well, which is even better because people can pull me up if I don't and do it. So yeah. I think maybe, sure, yeah. I think I might have just committed to doing this. <laughs> so thank you for that, <laughs> if you said through gritted teeth. But hey, it's a good, yeah. it'd be good to lose some weight and good to get fit. Or fit yeah, it, and it helps to have an accountability buddy or team or whatever, you know. So, so yeah, uh, okay. that, Sorry, that's how it works, okay. right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are we ready for another one? Yeah, sure. Uh, shall I uh, spin now? You yeah, spin, so you spin, are spin surprised. The wheel. Yeah, you spin the wheel. Yeah, spinning. So, Steve, what is the most important decision you ever made, and why? Oh. Um, one leaps out to me, um, and I I use this uh, actually on courses and stuff. It's the most important decision was to leave a job. It was to leave a role that I didn't like. Uh, it had a great title. I was a head of, you know, head of technology. Um, the title was great. The role was just wrong for me, and it was that decision that then put me into the trajectory of where I am now. And it was to become a trainer, to be, to help people, to become a coach. Uh, Cause that's where my passions are. And I could have climbed the corporate ladder. I could have stayed, but it, the, the role was making me ill. The role was, you know, the stress I was putting on myself was making me ill and it was affecting my thoughts affecting the way that i was working how how i interacted in people with people um and it was um, the right decision to go no this is not for me and i okay so what are we going to do you know working out the strengths working out what was uh, good um and yeah so that's what it did so i i packed it in and said, right, let's become the best scrum trainer or let's become the best trainer, the best coach that I can be. So, yeah. And that was, oh, six, six years ago, five years. Well, it's, it's when we first met, in fact. 
Yeah, so yeah, I was thinking about go. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see what the next question comes up because it could be when was the last time you ate your weight in cake, uh, which I've never done. Um, but um, I'm going to spin the wheel. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, it's probably the last question already in the time box. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, actually, sorry. What did you want <laughs> to become when you were a kid and what happened to it? That's a great question. That is an awesome question. I've been thinking about this one already when I originally had that in the podcast, I think. I think it was one of my episodes. But anyway, uh, I read it before, and this is awesome. I wanted to become, as a kid, uh, Sherlock Holmes. Sorry, I I wasn't (laughs) a fictional character. (laughs) Yes, no, of course, a brilliant detective. And and it's better than Colombo, right? So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> for all the young people like uh you know sherlock holmes probably because there were recent uh, uh netflix and uh, or bbc series made about it but uh, yeah. uh colombo is like this really old smoking uh cranky <laughs> detective yeah. i don't don't want to become him <laughs> there's always one more anyway. question to ask just one more thing yes yes Yes, and that, that's actually a great coaching technique, but let's not get into that. No, uh, I, I wanted to become Sherlock Holmes because I love the way he looked at um, uh, solving problems. Yeah. So at first, uh, when I started my career after uh, uh, having studied, I started as a developer. And that was, of course, also solving problems. And um, you need some analytic skills if you're building complex problems but better people skills than sherlock holmes <laughs> probably <laughs> <laughs> if you yeah. want to keep friends and work in teams um but anyway uh no, I, I really want to, to be like help in uh, in in solving crime uh, and at the start i didn't didn't do that i was just working as a developer and then uh after some time um working for back then capgemini uh, as a de- developer in teams that got uh, uh, flown into customers to to help build stuff. Uh, we got the chance to work on the um, the website for the Dutch National Police, um, and I worked on that. So that was already a nice link. And then from that, actually, this is my origin story uh, as a scrum master. Uh, I got on track to become a scrum master because uh, on this um, we did scrum there, and I thought this is awesome. And mm. the scrum master there was like this awesome dude, um, uh, Sid Dane is his name. And uh, he was just doing it really naturally and really like, I thought, I want that. I don't want to solve the problems in the code. I want to uh, solve the problems in the system, in the, in the human uh-huh. system. In the, and, and so then I, I started um, consciously working on uh, uh, becoming a scrum master. And I got the chance there also. And from that, I joined uh, ProWare as a consulting company in the Netherlands that yeah. does a lot of agile consulting and training. So I got the chance there to develop further. And now it's actually full circle because I'm working again at the police. And I'm actually and not, not working on a detective team anymore. I did that uh, as a coach. Uh, but now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working in IT teams again. But again, uh, uh, playing my, my small part as a, as a scrum master and coach and trainer, helping people uh, hopefully uh, solve crime and support our yeah. civilians better. So, so have you, have I, you I ever think said it still works out. Foot- yes. <laughs> have you ever said a game is a foot Watson <laughs> and the elementary, my dear Watson and stuff? Just yeah, well, uh, conversation. yeah, yeah. I, I, I read uh, all the books when I was a kid in Dutch, so I don't actually know what Dutch translations were anymore. But uh, yeah, it would be. I, I think. I, I think. Uh, uh, taking a page from uh, Chris Stone's book, if we're name dropping, I, 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 I will look to des- design a, a Sherlock Holmes retro. Maybe uh, maybe he already has one. I can just steal it, but that's a nice, a nice idea. That's yeah. a cool idea. <laughs> yes. And then it almost like waits to the very end and then it just twists. And then, of course, it's because it was raining in Berlin on that day. What? And that's how we <laughs> fix our problems. Yes. Oh, how yes, did, exactly. Oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yes, this this kind of soil uh, has this this rare element in it, so it has to be. <laughs> yes, and that's only found in three places in Amsterdam. What? Yeah, and, and through the process of logical deduction, I've concluded that it can only be this place. I am actually yes. the killer. <laughs> yeah. What? 
<laughs> so, uh, Steve, I'm, I'm very curious by now. Uh, what would be your answer to this question? I, yeah, I, my head went all over the place uh, with this question. I, I, and similar to the London Marathon, which somebody may have committed me to, to do, um, I wanted to go to the Olympics. I remember watching, so uh, um, on my wall as a kid growing up, I had a picture of Alan Wells, who was in the 1980 Olympics. Now, I'm sure you were probably just being born at that time. Anyways, 100 meters runner. Uh, and uh, various reasons, uh, I think, he did, I don't think he won gold, but I'm not too sure, actually. Maybe he did. I can't remember. But anyway, I remember fast forward a couple of years to 1988, and mm -hmm. the Olympics were in Seoul. Um, and I remember watching uh, Peter Elliott and Steve Cram and Seb Coe, Steve Ovet. Maybe it's not Steve Ovet at that time. But anyway, I remember thinking, I want to go to the Olympics. I want to run. I want to. Because at the time, I was a, a quite a fast runner. I used to do 100 meters. Um, and I, the reason I was mentioned Peter Elliott was the fact that he comes from Sheffield and it's that's not that yeah. far away from where I live. Um, and I was thinking, hey, uh -huh. if he can go, I can go. And uh, I remember talking to my PE teacher about this and they kind of laughed at me. But um, which is <laughs> the best kind of motivation speech ever. Um, yes. Saying, no. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't the, I was the fastest runner at my school over 100 meters. And I was like third best in North Yorkshire, maybe fourth best. Um, and I thought, you know what? I could do this. I could do this. And then never really pushed it anywhere. But I, I wanted to go run in the Olympics. Fast forward a few more years to 2012 when the Olympics were in London. I was fortunate mm -hmm. to go um, see, see the Paralympics. And being from Yorkshire, I um, bought the cheapest tickets I could get. And the cheapest tickets, I remember uh, the way they did it. It was the age of the, if you took children, it was the age of the children you were taking. And I think and 25 quid each. And so got these tickets and I remember looking at them. We'd spent 70 pounds, something like that. Um, not much on four tickets. And it was row A. And I thought, oh, we're going to be up in the gods here. This is, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to see anything. But row A is the very first row. And we were on the uh, 100 metres section of the track. And I was thinking, wow. Uh, so uh, after we watched the events and stuff, I thought, I wonder how far I could get if I jump over <laughs> this barrier now. How far would I get before security? Could I actually get 100 metres on this? Uh, and fortunately, I didn't because uh, you know, I, but there was a bit where I thought, it's now or never, Steve. You could run the 100 metres on the Olympic track. I'm, I'm really glad I didn't, but there's a bit of me that just wishes that I had. Mm. <laughs> I mean, mm. like, you know, once to, yeah. to tell people, yeah, I was arrested at the London Paralympics yeah. for running. So, but yeah, so yeah. Like for me, it was really wanting to go to the Olympics and just hear that roar of the crowd and to achieve and just to, just to be there. Um, yeah, so I didn't actually achieve it, but in my head, I've done it many, many times. So, uh, well, you, 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 you still run more than 100 meters regularly, right? So yeah. <laughs> every time the first 100 meters, yeah. I remember um, at the time, my time was 11.97 seconds. This is when I was mm -hmm. 15, which was shifting a bit. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it was two seconds off the world record. So, Hey, I was two seconds off the world record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just two at that seconds. time, yeah, 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 yeah. Two seconds off the world record. <laughs> Don't tell the distance. Uh, um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, if it's the marathon, I was two seconds off the world record. <laughs> don't make me uh, don't make me push you to commit to two seconds of the world record on the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be a bit too far. That might be really too yeah. Far. <laughs> uh, if you see these marathon runners on TV, sometimes uh, the, the, my sprint is like half the speed of their steady pace for the yeah. marathon. It's crazy. crazy. I, I, I did the. I've done the Great North Run, which is a half marathon in Newcastle, and I remember looking and watching the elite women setting off and Paula Radcliffe. Uh, I was like, "Oh my lord, look how fast she is running!" And she was. Yeah just she was sprint she was 
my version of sprinting and she was just yeah. getting going and it was just like uh-huh how can you move that fast how can you but yeah. anyway yeah they, they amazing sprint. athletes yeah 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 so yeah so i wanted to go to the olympics and the closest i got was row a and that's not bad <laughs> so, well, yeah, you, you could smell the track that's pretty close <laughs> i could I, I could have touched it i could have run it and i'll I yeah, you could have run it. than eleven point nine seven seconds, but I reckon the security guards would have been a bit faster. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But th- those were different times, right? Uh, you you could buy four tickets for seventy quid for for the Olympics front row seat. Yeah, that's not going to happen uh, anymore. No, no. I mean, it was the Paralympics, but yeah, uh, it was, they were just trying to get it filled. <laughs> and, and hey, and they filled it, so that was good. That was good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In fact, actually, I heard on the radio in the UK. When was the last time we had a good year? And uh, people were phoning and goes, yeah, it was 2012. 2012 was the last time we had a good year in the UK. <laughs> so and I, I agree. The Olympics, Paralympics, Jubilee. Uh, yeah, yeah, 2012 is a good year. Hopefully it was interesting for, for you, the listener. Uh, um, and uh, I'm also, let's try to uh, uh, seduce uh, the other trainers into uh, doing this with us. Yeah. So if, if, if we both now commit, uh, talking about commitments, to uh, at least doing one with another trainer, trainer, then we can do some more questions and we oh, also true. get some more insights into the other trainers. So yeah. that's uh, that would be a nice uh, way to end it, I think. I think, yeah. Yeah. And obviously, if you want to attend or come on to a podcast, as, as Sean said at the start, get in touch. We're really friendly. Yes. Uh, it's not scary. We want, we kind of want a more of a natural conversation, um, which hopefully has come across. Um, I was listening to myself and Sean talk this morning um, or whenever you're listening to us. Um, so please get in touch, get in touch on the contact us page within uh, the scrumfacilitators.com website. Um, and we really do appreciate you listening. And we, and the figures of people listening are, blowing our minds at the moment and people are listening so it's it's thank you thank you from myself and i'm gonna say thank you from short as well because he's nodding yes so. yes <laughs> yes Th- thank you for listening and um uh, yeah so check out the, the website if you want to get into contact or check out previous episodes uh, they're also on your favorite podcast player of course and uh, for this year we're also uh, looking into getting more meetups planned uh, I've committed to doing one per month in the Netherlands, uh, but some may also turn out to be uh, hybrid or virtual. So check out our meetup page to uh, hope to see you soon. Yeah, likewise. Hope to see you soon and stay safe, folks.